Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14. Everything you were taught can be put in a few words. Respect and obey God. This is what life is all about. God will judge everything we do, even what is done in secret, whether good or bad. Ang pag-aaral natin ngayon, pinamagatan nating laws to obey para sumaya. Respect and obey God. God's law, which first and foremost means God's moral law. As stated, interpreted, and applied by human religious teachers, institutions, religious corporations. Siyempre, wala namang religion agad nung una, wala organized religion, wala mga nakasulat na mga do's and don'ts, pero over time na develop yan sa Israel at sa iba't ibang mga bansa na nag-develop ng kanika nilang mga religious institutions. Pero para sumaya ang tao, obey God's moral law. Kasi yan yung mga laws na na paglimi-limi, na pag-isip-isip, na interpret, na internalize ng mga generations of people. Na fine-tune nila kung paano nila i-adapt sa buhay nila, ang godliness, ang paniniwala nila, at alam na nila na ang pagsunod sa ganito mga alituntunin ang daan para sa maaliwalas na pamumuhay. But we should also take note, maraming teachers or prophets or priests, maraming teachings, prophecies, and priesthoods ay ayaw at actually rejected by God. Hindi komo yan ay religious institution, hindi komo sikat, hindi komo maraming member, hindi komo dominant, ay tama. At hindi lahat ng mga galing ng mga katuroan mula sa any religious institution ay godly. Tulad ng limbawa sa Isaiah 44.25, it says that God foils the signs of false prophets and makes fools of diviners overthrows the learning of the wise and turns it into nonsense. So, kita natin dito na sinasalungat ng Diyos. Ang gawain, maging ng mga ilang religious leaders and teachers and institutions. Jeremiah 14.15 Therefore, this is what the Lord says about the prophets who are prophesying in my name. I did not send them. Those same prophets will perish by sword and famine. Nakita natin ang mga malilinaw na pangungusap ng Diyos tukol sa mga nagsasabing sila ay mga propeta. At maraming katuruan na sinasabi nila, yun ang turo ng Diyos. Sabi ng Diyos, I did not send them. Those are false prophets and they will perish by sword and famine. At lalo na si Jesus, napakarami niya mga sinabi laban sa katuruan ng mga Pharisees. Mark 7, 9-13, sinabi pa ni Jesus, Ang gagaling ninyo, para lamang masunod ang inyong mga tradisyon, pinapawalang bisa ninyo ang utos ng Diyos. At marami pa kayong itinuturong katulad nito. Matthew 23:23, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. So sinasabi ni Jesus na yung mga religious leaders sa kanyang panahon, may maliliit na bagay na pinapalaki at may malalaking bagay na minamaliit. So hindi lahat na sinasabi nila ay reliable. So yung pag-respect na yan sa moral law, pinipili din natin. Kasi hindi lahat ng moral laws, hindi lahat ng religious laws ay laws of God. Marami mga moral and religious laws na na-develop lang, na-invento, o kaya ay na-perfect ng mga religious institutions kasi bagay sa panahon, kasi effective sa mga specific times and places. Pero hindi ibig sabihin universal ang application nun at universally effective. Kaya magdahan-dahan din tayo sa pagsunod sa moral law. Lalo ko ang pagsunod nito ay nagiging napakahirap, madugo, sobrang sacrifice ang hinihingi sa atin, halos mawala na tayo ng buhay at ikabubuhay sa pagsunod, i-review natin. Baka naman hindi galing sa Diyos, imbento lang ng religion. And of course, may isa pang law na dapat sundin para sumaya ang buhay. Natural law. Merong moral religious law, it was developed much later. 
it is grafted into institutional religion. But natural law was there at and from the beginning. It is grafted not into religion or in religious institutions, but into nature. So, dalawang laws na ang ating binabanggit para dapat sundin at sumaya. Moral, religious law. Kaya lang hindi 100% na sure ka na yung moral or religious law na yan ay galing sa Diyos. Dapat suriin. Kasi invento lang naman ang tao, ang mga religious institutions, ang maraming mga batas dyan, maraming chetche boretche na religion. Invento lang yan ng mga religious leaders. Maaring effective, kailangan for a while, at uh, nakakatulong for a while, but it doesn't mean universally effective yun. Kaya dapat reviewin. But, natural law is universally effective. Why? Because natural law is not invented by man. Hindi katulad ng mga religious laws na mayroong totoong bigay ng Diyos at mayroong mga nakahalong invented by people. Pero ang natural law, Diyos ang may bigay lahat kasi Diyos ang lumikha ng nature. Hindi naman tayo nakakalikha ng nature eh. We can only recreate here and there, we can only modify here and there, but we cannot create. Only God creates. So lahat ng law of creation, law of nature, definitely law of God. At para sumaya, sumunod sa moral law, kung nasuri na natin na ito nga ay papasa at religious law na ito ay galing nga sa Diyos, at para sumaya, sumunod sa natural law. Romans 1.20 For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse to not know God. So ang Diyos daw ay nagpakilala sa pamamagitan ng kanyang nilikha. May pakilala ang religion tungkol sa Diyos, pero iba-ibang religion may pagkakaiba-iba ng pagkaka, pagpapakilala tungkol sa Diyos, samantalang iisa ang Diyos. Therefore, doubtful kung 100% correct ang pagpapakilala ng mga religions. Pero ang pagpapakilala ng nature, 100% correct. Kasi hindi pwedeng pakialaman ng tao ang law of nature. It could have only come from the Creator. And God will judge everything we do, how we obey or disobey religious law, up to a point, and natural law in all points. Laws that govern and shape human life, or laws to obey para sumaya, ano-ano? Tulad ng nasabi natin, natural law. At may itadagdag pa tayo. Legal law. Romans 13.1 Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Ecclesiastes 8.2.3 Obey the king's command. Do not be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. Do not stand up for a bad cause, for he will do whatever he pleases. Since a king's word is supreme, who can say to him, what are we doing? So, para kasumaya, obey legal law, obey the king, obey the government, at huwag kang magmamadali daw aalis sa king's presence. Ibig sabihin, pakinggan mo talaga kung anong sinasabi, kunin mo buong buo, kung anong inuuto sa'yo, para hindi ka malito. Huwag kang magkamali. At huwag ka daw mag-stand up for a bad cause. And in the context of what this is saying, do not stand up against the king kasi may kapangyarihan siya at kayang-kaya kanyang parusahan, may kapangyarihan ng estado para magbigay ng parusa sa mga lalaban dito. Since a king's word is supreme, nang ginoon, sino tayo para basta-basta na lamang na magtanong at lumaban? So, yan ang isa sa mga paraan para kasumaya. Huwag kang bumangga sa pader kung lalo hindi naman kailangan at lalo hindi naman malinaw na malinaw sa iyo na nasa panig mo ang Diyos. Huwag bumangga sa pader. What to obey and operationalize to be happy? Moral and religious law, tulad ng binagit na natin kanina. Genesis 4.7 If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you but you must rule over it. So, yun ang dapat gawin. Kilalanin ang kasalanan, tanggihan, pagwagian. What do you operationalize to be happy? Ano ang iyong papaanda rin? Faith. 
prayer. Matthew 17.20, He replied. At parang sinasabi niya sa mga you who could not do it, yung dapat gawin, sabi niya nila, kasi bakit hindi namin magawa? Because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So para ka sumaya, kailangan nananalig at kailangan marunong ka magpaantar ng pananalig na yan to your advantage para maghanap ang gusto mong maghanap. Matthew 21-22 If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Sino ang makapangyarihang tao? Yung buo ang pananalig. Yung marunong gumamit ng pananalig na ito to ask, to seek, to knock. Dahil sabi ni Jesus, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Kayo may mga nagsasabi, Jesus, kung kaya niyo po sana, gawin niyo ito para sa amin. Mark 9.23 If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Kaya kailangan natin na mag-concentrate, manahimik, mag-meditate para maunawa natin in a quiet spiritual way kung ano ang kapangyarihan ng pananalig. Kasi pananalig ang tunay na kapangyarihan. Hindi armas, hindi kayamanan, pananalig. Because faith can move mountains. What do you obey? Operationalize and accept to be happy. At ngayon meron ng accept. Kasi meron ng faith, meron ng moral law, meron ng natural law, meron ng legal law. Pero pag ginawa mo ang lahat ng yan, hindi pa rin 100% na magaganap ang gusto mo, pwede pa rin magkabisala. Kasi meron na tayong dapat tanggapin, chance. Meron din. Kasali yon sa bilang. Ecclesiastes 9.11 I have seen something else under the sun. Ano daw mga nakita pa ni Solomon sa kanyang katalinuhan? The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. Sabi ni Solomon, may nakita pa rin akong kakaiba sa buhay, ha? Kahit mabilis, hindi lagi nananalo sa karera. Kahit matalino, hindi laging may nakakain. Kahit brilliant, hindi laging yumayaman. At kahit matalino at aral, hindi laging sa kanya pumupunta ang blessing. Sabi niya, may kanya-kanya rin kamalasan. Sabi ng contemporary English version, we each have our share of bad luck. Meron din kanya-kanya daw kamalasan. So, pag ginawa mo ang lahat, sinusunod mo ang moral law, pero meron nga tayong warning, hindi lahat ng moral ng religious law are from God. So, mamili ka rin. Pag sinunod mo ang legal law, natural law, pinaandar mo ang faith, magbigay ka rin ng space for chance. Para kung nabigo, hindi nagtagumpay, hindi ka nagtataka, hindi ka nawawala ng gana o nawawala ng pananalig, ilagay mo sa kwarto niya, o ito chance ito, o ito malas, o inilagay ko dyan, tapos, hindi ka lito, kasi pwede rin yung mangyari. Proverbs 11.24 One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds and duly, but comes to poverty. Mga ironies ng buhay. Meron daw taong bigay ng bigay, at habang bigay ng bigay, lalo namang yumayaman, lalong nagkakaroon, hindi na uubos napapalitan, mas marami pa ang kapalit. Pero meron nam daw tipid ng tipid, wise ng wise, meron ipit ng ipit, pero ang kinakawian niya rin, karokhaan, kahirapan. Hindi garanteed na pagbigay ka ng bigay, mauubos. Hindi rin garanteed na pa ang kunat-kunat mo at ang tipid-tipid, eh, hindi ka mauubusan. Time and chance happens to all. Pero syempre, Huwag tayong umasa sa time and chance. Yung time and chance, fall back lang natin yan. Ang gawin natin is obey moral law, obey natural law, operationalize our faith, obey legal law, at 
Pag nagawa na natin lahat yan at meron pa rin sumabit o hindi nagtagumpay, doon natin ilagay sa time and chance. At least, may lalagyan. Pero huwag naman time and chance agad na simula na policy ng buhay natin na ala tsamba, bahala na hindi ganun. Hindi yung maling gamit ng word na bahala. Kasi ang paggamit ng word na bahala, ang totoo niyan is to be responsible. But that's another story. Ecclesiastes 5.14 Wealth could be lost through some misfortune. So pwede yung mangyari ang yaman-yaman mo na, humirap ka pa, walang nakakaalam. Ecclesiastes 8.14 There is something else meaningless that occurs on earth. The righteous who get what the wicked deserve and the wicked who get what the righteous deserve. This too I say is meaningless. Ano lang ang sinasabi ng lahat ng yan? Nothing is certain. Walang tiyak. Alam ng Diyos ang lahat, pero hindi natin alam. So we only do what is best. We only do the best we can and leave the rest up to God and then accept all the results. Ecclesiastes 11.6 Sow your seed in the morning and at evening let your hands not be idle for you do not know which one will succeed whether this or that or whether both will do equally well. Kahit sa Bible, sinasabi, magtanim ka sa umaga at sa gabi, maghanap ka pa na ibang magagawang hanap buhay kasi hindi mo alam kung alin ang magtatagumpay yung itinanim mo o yung ginawa mo nung gabi. Sabi mo ganun, hindi mo alam yan. O baka naman pareho magtagumpay o parehong mabigo o yung isa mabigo, isa magtagumpay. Pero ang dapat, gawin mo kung ano yung kaya mo the best you can, leave the rest to God, then accept whatever results happen. Sa quantum physics, sinasabi rin yan. All possible states and possible futures of a particle exist at the same time. Pwedeng mangyari ang kahit anong possibility. There is not one definite state, outcome or future, until observation is done. Observation, measurement, prediction, will collapse all possibilities into just one out of the many possibilities. But you will never know where it will lead until you get there. No one knows the future. Ecclesiastes 8.7 Since no one knows the future, who can tell someone else what is to come? It helps us to be more dependent on God, to always follow God, and to always be watchful. But it also helps us to relax. Kasi, hindi naman lahat ng nagpapagod, umaani. At hindi lahat ng hindi nagtatanim ay hindi na nakakaani. Pero, generally speaking, dapat magtanim para umani. Ecclesiastes 7, 14 When times are good, you should be cheerful. When times are bad, think about what it means. God makes them both to keep us from knowing what will happen next. Kailangan natin mag-exercise ng faith. So pag daw masaya, ang panahon magsaya. Pag malungkot, isipin mo, Diyos din ang may bigay niyan. At pinapayagan ng Diyos yung mga extremes, kahit alin dyan, para hindi natin mabatid at mahulaan kung ano mangyayari pa sa future. Lagi na lang tayong umasa, Take one day at a time. Take one step at a time. Matthew 24, 36. Tungkol daw sa kung kailan magaganap ang magaganap, sabi ni Jesus, but about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So you see, walang nakakaalam ng future, not even Jesus, in that specific subject, but only the Father. So leave it up to the Father. Huwag natin problemahin yung dapat just lang ang may alam para relax tayo sa buhay. Now learn from the past and forget its sorrows. Yan ang katuturan ng nakaraan. Yan ang kabuluhan at yan ang gamit ng nakaraan. Matuto tayo sa nakaraan. Pero limutin na natin ang mga, ling- mga lungkot ng nakaraan. Huwag nang paulit-ulitin pa. Ang ulitin lang yung learning. Huwag na yung mga negative feelings. Philippians 3.13, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind 
and straining toward what is ahead. You want to be happy in life? Learn from the past, but leave all the negative feelings behind. Move on. Yun ang sasaya. Yung iba naman baligtad eh. Ang daladala nila ngayon from the past ay yung negative feelings at yung learning ang naiwan. Kaya malungkot at paulit-ulit ang mistake at mabigat ang pakinamdam. Ang silbi ng nakaraan, learn from it, but leave behind all the negative feelings, all the pain, all the sorrow, all the drama. Participate in the shaping of your personal present and future. Tumulong. Gumawa. Pero huwag sobrang anxious. Matthew 6.34 So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. At i-consider natin ang quantum logic. Quantum mechanics says that certain events occur with a probability and are not wholly determined. That doesn't mean that they have no cause, just that they have no complete known cause. In other words, some things behave as they are simply because they are. In so many words, may mga bagay na mangyayari at mangyayari. Ang ending ay ganito at ganon, pero hindi natin alam kung paano dumadating sa ganong ending. Hindi natin alam ang detail, pero ang general result ay madaling malaman. Consider the pachinko board. Sa Japan, may mga laruan sa mga neighborhood na para may mga bolang mahulog-hulog doon sa mga butas-butas. At pag uh, pinuntahan nun yung tama, ay mananalo ka. Pagka hindi pumunta sa uh, dapat ay para sa sa'yo, mananalo ka. So, makikita natin sa picture na dadaan yung bola dyan sa mga parang mga turnilyo kung saan-saan siya makakarating, mahuhulog sa mga butas. na one of those or several of those butases, eh, pag doon nagpunta yung bola, panalo ka. Pag nagpunta sa iba, talo ka. Now, we can calculate the probabilities of balls going to each slots at the bottom. But we cannot say why any one ball landed in any particular hole. Kaya panalo lagi ang pachinko operator. Ganon din sa casino, sa sweepstakes, sa lotto, sa hueteng. Merong alam na ng nature, alam na ng statistics na magiging bunga ang lahat. Halimbawa, sa sweepstakes, sa, halimbawa, sa lotto. Alam na alam na na may mananalong isa o baka wala pa nga, pero merong isang libong tataya, talo sila lahat. Kaya laging panalo yung lotto office, laging panalo yung safe sex office, laging panalo yung casino. Pag nagpunta kayo sa casino para kumain, makikita nyo kung mga nangyayari. Ang daming ilaw, ang daming carpet, ang daming tauhan, ang daming kinusweldohan, ang daming mga luho, ang daming magagandang view, mga painting, mga bulaklak. Sino nagbabayad ng lahat ng yon E di yung mga natatalo doon. Saan kukuha ng pera ang igagastos ko hindi talo yung mga nagpupunta doon? Pero bakit? May laro pa rin ang laro. Kasi sa isang daang laro mo, may isang kampanalo, feeling mo laging may chance ka manalo. At laging may chance, pero the law of probabilities already tell you ang mananalo yung kasino, yung may-ari ng pachiko, yung merong pahueteng, siya ang mananalo at siyang yayaman, hindi ikaw. Kasi alam na na ganun ang kakahinatnan. Yung detail lang ang hindi alam, like sino ang tatama, alim number ang mananalo, alim butas ang pupuntaan ng bola, pero alam na nating mananalo at mananalo yung may palaro. Everything is in God's hands. Everything follows the law of nature. Yung marunong makaunawa ng law of nature at marunong gumamit nito to their advantage tulad ng mga nagpapaandar ng mga kasino, yun ang nakikinabang sa law of nature. And as we can say, it is opposed to the law of religion, diba? to the law of morals. Pero may morality law, may natural law, may time and chance, kaya may mga ganyang bagay sa ating paligid. So, everything is in God's hands. We cannot change anything in a significant and general way. We can only rearrange mountains. But that is small, that is local compared to the size of the universe. But we cannot create or recreate the universe. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Dapat lang tayong tumanggap ng mga katotohanan na hindi natin mababago, huwag na natin baguhin. Nakaset ang lahat. At kung nakaset ang lahat, ibig sabihin, everything is under control ng creator ng Diyos. Halimbawa, ang quantum physics talks about the fine-tuned universe. 
Fine-tuning refers to various features of the universe that are necessary conditions for the existence of complex life. Examples, gravitational constant. If gravity is a bit too strong, the universe will collapse into a ball. If slightly too weak, everything will fly out and no stars or planets will ever form. So gravity is just as strong as it should be. The fine tuning is 1 in 10 to the 60th power. Imagine a dial divided into 10 to the 60th power parts. Move the dial one step up or one step down and the universe will cease to exist. To put in perspective of small things change, all the sun in all the earth, including deserts, is 10 to the 25th power only. It's like multiplying all the sands three times more, and then remove or just add one grain, and the universe will not exist. Kung hindi nyo naintindihan yun, wag na lang. Sa so, nakaintindi, mabuhay. Mas may dagdag kayong kaalaman kasi nag-aalag kayong physics. Ang ibig sabihin lang, everything is set sa universe. Wala kang pwedeng palitan, wala kang pwedeng ibahin. Ni isang patak na tubig, walang umaalis o dumarating sa universe since creation. Nandun lang lahat, paikot-ikot, nare-recycle. Wala kang pwedeng ibawas kahit isang butil ng buhangin. Wala kang pwedeng baguhin sa gravity, one point up or one point down, kasi magko-collapse ang buong universe. Colossians 1.17, referring to the Son of God. He is before all things, and in Him all things are. Hold together. The contemporary English version says, God's Son was before all else, and by Him everything is held together. In other words, we're in good hands because everything is held together by the Son of God. Pwede tayo mag-participate sa buhay, mag-recreate and rearrange here and there. But all the big stories and all the big issues are set. They are there. They cannot be changed. It gives us confidence that life goes on all the recycling keeps going on the universe goes on and it also tinuturo sa atin accept whatever comes and whatever happens kasi ang nakatakda yun ang magagana yung nakaset yun ang masusunod ecclesiastes 610 whatever happens happens its destiny is fixed you can't argue with fate. Tanggapin na lang natin ang maluwag kahit ayaw natin. Huwag na tayong makipagtunggali. Huwag na tayong mahirapan para makamove on tayo. Philippians 1.27 Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. To be happy, to be happiest, just obey the laws and accept whatever happens as outcome. Just always do your best. Your best should be enough. But if your best is not enough, accept the result. Merong mga bagay na umaandar, mga batas ng creation na lingid sa atin, pero alam ng Diyos. So magtiwala sa Diyos. Do whatever you can. Obey moral law, natural law, legal law, and leave a space for chance. Be happy. Pick up the pieces. Don't insist on your own way after you have already worked so hard. If it doesn't work, leave it at that. Maging relax tayo sa buhay habang nagsisika pa nagtatrabaho, but not too hard because you cannot change anything anyway. God bless us all.